Welcome, Noble Templar. Uh, this is another Let's Play, although it's probably not going to be a very serious one or a very long one. I was actually going to go ahead and do a Let's Play of Legends 2, but then I realized that the disc doesn't sound very good in the console, it's a little loud, and I'd have to hook up my PS2 or PS1, and I'm being lazy tonight, so I don't want to do that. So I was just kind of flicking through some of my PS1 titles, and then I saw this one, and I just kind of laughed. It's a Konami title, so I know they're not doing very well right now. They're kind of a fail of a company nowadays, but back in the day, they used to be pretty good. And, ladies and gentlemen, this was kind of a childhood card game for me. And so, you know, I was like, why not? I know it's not a very good game, but I'm doing it anyway. I am playing this game. That's right, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. And when I get started, I gotta admit, this game really didn't get the idea of the trading card game. Um, there's only like one useful spell, and then the monsters are basically the stronger you get them, the better they are. That's really the only rules you got. Blaze. There we go. Yes, we will be Blaze. Blaze. At least it had a pretty decent story for being, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh and all. This is it. I've found it at last. The forbidden treasure of the ancient sorcerers. Mwahaha, I am evil. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Honestly, considering what the game is, I usually don't even bother to play it normally. I usually just go, yeah, I'm gonna game shark this bad boy, because quite frankly, it's it's basically the stronger the cards you get, the more likely the win condition. Leave it anyway! Sorry, dude. I'm leaving. We're going to the dual ground. How about a duel? Okay. So, basically, all the Yu-Gi-Oh characters you had before are here again, except in ancient Egypt, kind of. I guess everyone in the anime gets reincarnated, so that's a thing. Yeah, you know... And I don't know what these things really are for. They're supposed to power you up in certain conditions and stuff, so... That's a thing. And yeah, you can set your cards down face down like this, so that's also a, a thing. Ha! You lose. Uh, we're gonna go you, I guess. And we're going to go Mercury, because, yeah, we don't have a Mercury. Ah, no, 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 I wanted to attack. Uh, I forgot how to do that, I guess. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's the thing. If you get the opposite element, if you will, uh, you get stronger. That's right. I haven't played this in forever. We're going to go Venus this time. So, you kind of have to rely on your guardian stars until you get a little stronger. <sighs> and, quite frankly, that's what this game's all about. Building up your characters, your deck, and yeah. So, is it a terribly hard game? Absolutely not. 
And am I going to go through the entire game? No, I'm just doing an episode of it because uh, this was kind of a fun game. And it was really the first time we got a real introduction to Yu-Gi-Oh! over here in the video game format outside of like Game Boy Color and stuff. So it had, you know, it has its place in history and all that. So, you know, we're going to go Mars with you, D-Human. Is that supposed to be Destiny Human, maybe? I don't know. But if the TCG was this slow, the current meta, this would be kind of boring. Um, especially since there are no abilities whatsoever to speak of in this game. Um, and that means that magic really only has one use. Yeah, it's full serving. You're gonna die. Yeah, these 900 hits are so powerful. There we go, finally. Yay, we win! Got a zone eater. Yay, us. And four little stars. Oh, that reminds me. You can actually get the codes of the cards, like, you know, little numbers and um, use them to, you know, um, basically, you can use that to, well, you know. Wow, there are lots of people around. The mages are about to start their thing. Awesome, but spooky. Hellishin. You know, the last pharaoh should have been smacking around a high pre, uh, high mage, honestly. Ooh, snap. We're definitely not ready to face him. We can literally get annihilated right now. So we're going to go to the card shop and hopefully get a couple things. And right now, that's basically how it is. You basically have to get cards. Uh, oh, right. You can't actually buy cards. You have to... Yeah. We have a whopping total of 40 cards. Which means we basically have nothing. And so, honestly, they encourage you to save, go back to the title, and get cards from the actual game. And, I mean, it was a smart tactic for the time, but you can see where the problems kind of rise from that, because you might have, like, 300 star chips, I guess that's what they call them in this game, I don't know, and you don't have any of the codes, because this is kind of at the cusp of semi-common internet use, so it's kind of one of those, eh, you know what I mean? If, if you want me to actually play this game full, um, let me know. I, I, I'm not super excited about starting the game all over again, I've played it a couple times and all, so... I just thought I'd bring it up because it was really kind of an interesting bit of video game and Yu-Gi-Oh! history, so, you know, it's just one of those things that's like, hmm. So anyway, that is some of uh, the game. The story actually wasn't too bad. It basically talks about the Pharaoh 
and um, the high priests and the struggles of ancient Egypt, and then it switches over to Yugi in the future and him getting the Millennium items and stuff, and it goes back and stuff as well when you wake up because the Millennium items were gathered by Yugi and it woke the Pharaoh. In this case, Blaze, because I'm lazy like that. Anyway, it, it, is it a game I would recommend? No, not terribly. I mean, if you just want to play it for just the kicks and giggles, okay, yeah, I could see you do that. But if you do, I would honestly recommend uh, going on like the PlayStation 1, game sharking it, because getting the cards is really tedious and you need to know all the card numbers. And honestly, I don't see the reason to do that. I mean, the storyline's okay, so it's it might be worth considering to play through if you really like Yu-Gi-Oh! and you want to know kind of an interesting side story that's not even canon. But outside of that... It's just kind of part of history. It's the first time it was on the PlayStation 1, so, you know, it was kind of neat. And I just thought I'd share that tonight. Um, I was going to do, like I said, Legends 2, but that kind of fell through because I need to hook up my PlayStation 1 or PS2, and I don't want to do that because I'm lazy. I know, that is a terrible reason, and I'm sorry, but I just wanted to get a video up. And I thought, yeah, this is kind of an interesting thing I haven't shown. And I thought people might like to see it, so here you go. Um, and again, if you want to see more of this, I can do that. I, I mean, I'll have to actually pull out a save file and stuff, but that's okay. I don't mind doing that. And if everyone wants that, if not, well, you might check it out. Either way, it's kind of up to you. Cheers.